So now the uh, end channel JFET transistor circuit I set up looks a lot like my bipolar junction transistor circuits. I have the transistor and LED is on right now. I do a lot of these demonstration circuits where I uh, use the transistor to turn an LED on and off and points in between. So the uh, end channel JFET transistor I have here is doing a lot of the same things as a bipolar junction transistor but it actually operates in a much different way so we're gonna look at that in this video so now to begin with just like the uh, bipolar junction transistor we have two pins the uh, JFET transistors right here the flat sides facing uh, down as far as uh, we're concerned uh, forward on here so up on top here we have the drain the middle pin is the source and then the lower pin the pin down here is the gate and so just like the bipolar junction transistor um, if you don't know about bipolar junction transistors you should study them before the JFET um, I'm gonna assume you already know how bipolar junction transistors work but just like the bipolar junction transistor the uh, JFET transistor has current flowing through two terminals so right now the LED is uh, connected to the positive side of the power source and then the drain so the drain here is more positive than the source we have a current that is flowing through there and uh, that's how a bipolar junction transistor works too you have a current flowing through there but uh, in this case the terminal the pin here that controls the uh, current is the gate so now I'm going to show you the biggest difference between the uh, bipolar junction transistor and the JFET so now when I remove the signal from the uh, gate you notice the transistor stays on the uh, bipolar junction transistor needs its based uh, biased either positive or negative depending whether it's NPN or PNP type for the transistor to turn on. In this case, the transistor is normally on, the JFET transistor. And so, I'll uh, reattach this. And actually, what I'm doing when, uh, when you see the JFET transistor turn off, I'm actually giving the uh, gate a lower voltage than either the uh, drain or the source. So, I'm gonna explain that a little more coming up so now I'll just kind of do a little step-by-step -step build using a schematic to make it a little easier to see this circuit in real life so as I said we have an LED connected to the positive side of the power source and then to the drain of the uh, JFET transistor this is an end channel you know it's end channel because the arrow is pointing in sometimes the arrow is pointing down here that, that doesn't matter it's the direction that it's pointing so it's pointing in, that tells us it's an end channel uh, JFET transistor. The JFET transistor just has this image. It may or may not be circled. This is the J310 transistor, uh, JFET transistor. So, as you can see here, the LED comes to this top pin. When you're looking at the uh, flat side there, or the pin on the left, I should say. And then uh, the other side, got the positive coming here to the LED and then to the drain as you can see here so now we're going to take a look at the source pin the source pin has a voltage divider attached to it so you should already know what a voltage divider is two resistors you tap in the middle or you could use a trim pot to get a variable amount of resistance on each side and you get a fraction of the power source voltage so in this case I'm using two equal value resistors 470 ohms and uh, so we'll have a uh, pretty reliable about 4.5 volts on the source pin. So the source pin, source terminal on uh, the schematic is the lower one here. On this component, the uh, J310 JFET N channel transistor, it's the middle pin. So we're looking at the back now, but uh, the middle pin is the middle pin. Uh, either way you're looking at it and you can see the two resistors are 
plugged in to the same row but uh, one goes to positive one goes to negative and you should know that as a voltage divider that means we're putting 4.5 volts on that pin so now the reason why we're not putting this directly to ground is because this is not going to be the uh, lowest voltage pin of this transistor which is a little odd for a transistor this is just the way I designed this circuit sometimes you will see this this isn't a rule but uh, to get this circuit to work I had to make uh, this not go directly to ground so now we come to the gate and the gate as I said that's the uh, bottom pin on here right pin if you're looking at the uh, flat side on the schematic it's the one that comes to the side here with the arrow and so as I said this controls the JFET transistor now as I mentioned down here I have this set to 4.5 volts the maximum voltage we'll get from this voltage divider setup is about 4.5 volts that's because this is a 5 kilo ohm trim pot and I have in series with it this 4.7 kilo ohm resistor just a fixed resistor so it's about a 5 kilo ohm resistor so they're almost the same resistance so if we set the trim pot up to here it'll be in the middle of the two resistances and we'll get 4.5 volts but if we turn it down towards ground the voltage will drop ultimately to zero volts and when the voltage gets close to zero volts that will actually shut the uh, transistor off and uh, then you see the LED turn off so you actually need that lower voltage than the source pin to turn the transistor off that's why when it's not connected like it's not connected now and the batteries plugged in the uh, transistor is actually on because the voltage isn't lower at the uh, gate than the source when uh, it's not plugged in at all you know uh, even when it is plugged in if it's 4.5 volts and this is 4.5 volts then you'll have conduction now you never want this voltage higher than the uh, source voltage now the way I have this set up is a lot different than uh, pretty much any circuit I've seen usually they use two batteries instead of using a voltage divider to hold up this voltage but uh, I'm not going to go into that as you learn the uh, transistor on your own you'll you'll see that elsewhere so now that I explained how this circuit works I'll do the demonstration again hopefully it's uh, easier to understand so I don't have anything at the source right now so it's not higher or lower than uh, or uh, sorry at the gate I don't have anything at the gate now so the gates not any higher or lower than the source so the transistors just on we have uh, the source holding the voltage to about 4.5 volts in that range as far as uh, this positive coming over here so the LED is not as bright as it would be with 9 volts but there's uh, plenty of voltage to get it going now I will attach the uh, trim pot output to the gate and so the trim pot is set all the way over here towards the positive side so we have uh, half the resistance here the other half of the resistance there as far as this pins concerned the uh, the output here it's like connected there so we got about 4.5 volts in that range uh, we're not gonna be exact but I'm gonna use an exact number of uh, about 4.5 volts now when I turn this more negative that will lower the voltage and you'll see at first the LED dims finally when we get uh, to a certain point the LED goes out but right now the trim pots all the way to negative it's about zero volts so we have 4.5 volts at the source and zero volts here at the gate so the gates a lower voltage that's why the transistor turned off we need that lower voltage than the source for it to turn off okay so now we're gonna just uh, look at the diagram a little bit to get an idea how this component works so this is the chemical makeup of the end channel JFET transistor so you have an end type material from uh, the drain to the source 
that's why we had an LED on the drain side just the way I set it up and then I had a voltage divider down here so uh, on the other end of the uh, LED was 9 volts the source was 4.5 volts so we had a voltage difference across here of about 4.5 volts minus the voltage drop of the LED of course but uh, in any case we had a voltage difference so this uh, end channel is conductive when uh, when there's no voltage difference between the gate and the source and uh, so so that conducts that's why when we didn't even have anything attached to the gate or the gate had the same voltage as the source there is conduction because this normally conducts it's normally on now also notice these two P type areas they're actually connected a lot of times you'll see a wire connecting the two of them to show that I didn't add that just realize these two P type areas are uh, connected electrically now when the gate you notice there's a P type material at the gate and the source here is N type material so when the gate gets more negative than the uh, source then you have a reversed bias diode basically and what that does is that pinches off the current there and uh, slows down or stops if you have enough of a difference the current through there that's why the uh, transistor turns off when the gate is uh, more negative enough than the source so now I used a voltage divider to keep the source higher than what I could lower the gate to usually when I look at schematics and stuff I see them using two batteries but I think this is easier to follow if you're just learning this component I think it'll be easier to translate how I did this circuit to uh, the two battery circuit so now I'm gonna end this video on a couple things I should have mentioned that I have on uh, my diagram but didn't get to them of course JFET stands for junction field effect transistor and also I added this little uh, this is basically a diode diagram but uh, you got the uh, N type and P type material just like a diode with this transistor and uh, so you should already know diodes now and and realize if the negative negative uh, n type material side of the diode is uh, more positive than the p type the p types more negative that turns that diode off basically the diode doesn't conduct in that way it's reversed biased and so you should uh, when you're looking at uh, transistor components like this you should be thinking of how this material works uh, like as if it was a diode and uh, that'll make it easier to understand the component